I'm going to show you how to install an operating system on a Raspberry Pi, so let's go. So the first thing I'm going to show you is all the different models. Now these are just the current models that are out. You can go check that out on the Wikipedia page as well. Now this tutorial works with any Raspberry Pi. So the first thing you want to do is go grab your Raspberry Pi, jump onto the Raspberry Pi website, and then go to the downloads link. In there you'll find the different options. And what we want to do is install the Raspberry Pi desktop. So we're going to click on Raspberryan. Now we're going to download that version. Now you can either get the base or the light version, which is smaller, or you can get the more upgraded with all the extras. And that includes a few other pieces of software that you don't have to download later on. There is a page that explains how to do the install as well, but I'm going to show you here right now. So there's two different ways of doing it. You can use the noob software or you can install another way, which I'm going to show you here by downloading the Belina Etcher which is basically just a software tool that'll load the operating system onto your SD card. While I'm downloading my Raspberry file, I'm going to install the Etcher. Now make sure you grab your SD card, insert it into the SD card slot on your computer. Now make sure it's got nothing on it and it is the right size that you're after. We're going to open up in Belina Etcher. We're going to add the file we want to. Make sure we've got the correct SD card selected and then we hit the flash button. Now it'll automatically install and flash all of that operating system onto the SD card. Now I did get a uh, need to format after it had finished, but I just closed that off and the install still worked fine And you'll see that it'll change to flash complete take the SD card out plug it into your Raspberry Pi Plug in the USB power and your HDMI cable and then plug it into the USB power And you can see there the LED light will come on for the power and then basically it'll load up this first screen so to go through the first steps we click through next and you select the information like your country language and time zone i don't have the network cable plugged in at the moment so it's manually going through and setting these now it does take some time to set these up now you can enter in a password so you can log in you do not have to add a password so i'm just going to hit next on this one so you can just go through and it does say about if there's black edges to make sure that your screen's set up properly so you can just tick or not tick depending on whether or not you see those black edges and then you hit the next button now if your network was connected you can do a software update i'm going to skip it at the moment and basically that is completed so we can restart this raspberry pi or you can come back to it later so once the raspberry pi boots up you'll have your desktop which you can see in the corner i still don't have the network plugged in we have a volume control where you can mute and change the volume we have the calendar in the corner and the time now if you hit the start button in a sense you've got all the different drop down menus for programming games the office the preferences and you can shut down the computer you've also got your links up the top which can also be accessed in that start menu the explorer which would open up similar to a windows or mac where you have your folder structure and all of your folders you have a run command which we'll go through in future and I'll show you how we use that run command you also have your preferences for your desktop in which you can change what your background and the colors that you're using for your system which can also be accessed via that start menu as well now in the preferences we also have the Raspberry Pi configuration when we open that up we can set things in here like the password, the name of the computer, and a few other things that you may need to utilize in future, and also the performance or overclocking of the Raspberry Pi, which we'll go through in another video. There's also a run command, and a few other things like a media player if you want to set it up as a media player. We have some programming tools like Scratch, etc. Then we also have the shutdown, restart, or log off. So that's about it for this basic tutorial. Hopefully this helps you install an operating system on a Raspberry Pi. That's about it from me. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.